بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم I'm Fatima Knight and I am Hisham Hall Fatima Knight's husband just making sure they know uh, we want to talk to, to you all a little bit about Eid al-Adha um, and the significance of this holiday of ours and the legacy of Prophet Ibrahim and the, the meaning in his story, his powerful story. Inshallah. Uh, you know, we are on the doorsteps of Eid al-Adha. It's a few days away. And I think we'd be doing ourselves service to reacquaint ourselves, to remind ourselves of the uh, meanings behind um, what Allah Azza wa Jal tells us um, in the Quran about Ibrahim alayhi salam mm -hmm. and uh, his son Ismail alayhi salam and also to bring some of those lessons to our viewers. Yeah, yeah I mean I think for me um, as we were preparing to do this video I reflected on uh, how little importance I think this holiday is generally given because mm. unlike Eid al-Fitr which has such a build-up, um, you know Eid al-Adha seems to kind of just pop up out of the blue sure. once a year. And so uh, just for me in reflecting upon the story of Prophet Ibrahim in uh, preparation for this. Um, I don't know, I was really moved and touched mm -hmm. by the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, agreed. With Eid al-Fitr, you got a month of fasting, and you know that that's going to culminate with this massive right. feast, right? So there's, uh, it's particularly those last 10 days of Ramadan, there's talk about Eid, there's, there are debates yeah. in the community as to when, right, right what yeah. method is going to be employed yeah. right, to figure out when Eid falls exactly yeah, but Eid al-Adha unless you're in Mecca yeah unless you're on the pilgrimage on the yeah. Hajj you don't you know it yeah. just appears it just appears yeah, and you, yeah appears so why don't you share days. why don't you share yeah. with us some of your deeper reflections yeah. or did you want to first maybe read we can yeah, yeah read. let's read the ayat it's pretty short okay. uh, yeah let's read Go ahead. okay so I'm gonna read the English here for our viewers Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. He said, I will go to my Lord. He is sure to guide me. Lord, grant me a righteous son. Again, this is Ibrahim alayhi salam. Right, peace be upon him. Abraham making yeah. dua, supplicating to God. Lord, grant me a righteous son. So we gave him the good news that he would have a patient son. A patient son. This is an important <laughs> point, right? Yeah. When the boy was old enough to work with his father, Ibrahim السلام, said, My son, I have seen myself sacrificing you in a dream. What do you think? He said, this is Ismail السلام, responding, Father, do as you are commanded, and God willing, you will find me, find me steadfast. I think it's important to mention to our viewers mm -hmm. that Firstly, the dreams of the prophets are all true dreams. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and with us, with, with the laity, uh, our dreams, there are different types of dreams that we may experience. Mm -hmm. There are, you know, nafsani dreams, uh, rabbani dreams, there are shaitani dreams. There are, you know, things can get all muddled up and, mm -hmm. and confusing. But with the prophets, peace be upon them all, dreams are reality. And so he sees in this vision that he is to sacrifice his son. Mm -hmm. But what's astounding here is Ismail السلام, and the Mufassirun, mm -hmm. the people of, of Quranic exegesis, tell us that Ismail السلام, here was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So he had just hit puberty. And he himself is a prophet, right? Mm -hmm. 
And it's important that he, that uh, the, the, the Mufassirin tell us that he is a teenager, meaning he has started to kind of assume this, this role and this function of Prophet, even though his father is still alive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's a, entered the age of taklif. Yeah. Right, of responsibility. Mm -hmm. What do you think, he said, uh, what do you think, Ibrahim asks his son Ismail. Ismail responds, Father, do as you are commanded, and God willing, you will find me steadfast, mm -hmm. patient. Right? SubhanAllah. And this is what God says, right? Mm -hmm. We have we, we gave him the, the good news that he would have a patient son. Mm -hmm. When they both submitted to God, and he had laid his son down on the side of his face, we called out to him, Abraham, you have fulfilled the dream. Meaning he was absolved from actually having to carry yeah. through. You have fulfilled the dream. This is how we reward those who do good. It was a test to prove their true characters, their belief. Mm -hmm. We ransomed his son with a momentous sacrifice and we let him be praised by succeeding generations. Mm -hmm. Peace be upon Ibrahim. This is how we reward those who do good. Truly, he was one of our faithful servants. And quickly before you share with us your reflections, uh, my dear wife, uh, God here, he presents Ismail and Ibrahim السلام, with a ram, mm -hmm. right, with a, with a sheep, with a horned ram. Uh, which some of the Mufassirun, Mufassirun say had grazed in paradise for 40 days and it was Jibreel السلام, who brings this ram to Ibrahim السلام, to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now of course we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God the Almighty has no need for any human blood, mm -hmm. for any human sacrifice. He has no need for any animal sacrifice. Yeah. But, but as you're going to share with us here in a moment, there's a lot packed into the story. Sure, sure. I mean, even something that uh, I just kind of thought about as you were reading just now, um, the fact that Ismail, like you were saying, is thought to be, uh, you know, somewhere around Tikrifi age, mm. right? So uh, in his teens, uh, you know, what, whatever that meant at the time, but he's not a child, right? Yes, he's not a little yeah. child. Um, and if, obviously he's being asked his opinion here, right? Mm -hmm. So he's um, of enough mental capacity to be able to tussle with that um, reality that he's being faced with. But it just made me think about the fact that uh, Prophet Ibrahim himself was a young man mm -hmm. when he was first faced with the issue of the idols, Allah right? Allah. Mm -hmm. um, and so you know, we have here the apple not falling too far from the tree, mm -hmm. but in a good way. Um, that, you know, Ibrahim السلام, in his youth showed just such momentous courage. Um, and he had the, the, the zeal of youth, right? But also he had, you know, a good heart in his chest and a, and a good mind in his head. Um, and he was righteous and so he acted accordingly but you know the level of courageousness that he exemplified at such a young age we see again replicated in his own offspring in the case of Ismail and so that's just kind of a reminder for me about you know the examples that you set and mm. um, you know that your children whether knowingly or unknowingly will adopt right some of your qualities sure um, yeah. uh, into the future and uh, yeah I mean this whole story it's it's of course the theme of sacrifice um, and you know this is the epitome of sacrifice sacrificing an actual human life sacrificing your child um, but of course we all struggle with sacrifice in our day-to-day -day lives I don't know if there's any human being who hasn't had to sacrifice something at some point. Sure, you know, yeah. What kind of person would someone be if they never had to give anything up, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and Ibrahim, in this instance, 
peace be upon him. And this isn't the first time you see, because and yes, there is some difference of opinion about whether it's Ibrahim, uh, whether it's Ismail or Ishaq, yeah. or Ishaq, but the majority Muslim mainstream opinion is that it's Ismail. Mm -hmm. But remember, it was Ibrahim who brought Ishaq, rather Ismail and his mother Hajar mm -hmm. to Mecca. Mm -hmm. So. Ibrahim has this very interesting connection with Ismail. Mm -hmm. This isn't the second time that God has shown him mm -hmm. that he has to sacrifice his son right. or his family. And, you know, we were talking about this before the shooting. As parents, I think, especially if you're a parent, you realize the mm -hmm. weight of what Ibrahim is being tasked with. It's one thing to sacrifice yourself, mm -hmm. right? Or to... Or to, to but it's a completely different thing when you're being asked to sacrifice your family, your children. Mm -hmm. And remember, Ibrahim salam, was an old man when he had both Ismail and Ishaq. Right. So he, he's an old man, right? He's yeah. waited a lifetime to, to, have, have to have children. He has this child and he's being asked to one, leave him in the desert. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, yeah, some exactly. years later, he's being asked to sacrifice him. Yeah. And what we see reoccurring is this incredible, incredible submission to the will of God. Mm -hmm. And I think what we have to really, the point that I think we want to drive home to our viewers and to remind ourselves of, is that this submission, this will, this desire rather to serve God, mm -hmm. right, it, 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 to the utmost capacity is driven by a love for God, mm -hmm. right, is driven by a deep, 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 unconditional love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. Because, and it, and it also, I think, um, uh, brings out the tawakkul, right? The trust Absolutely. that these people, yeah. that the prophets, teachers and leaders of mankind, right. our guides, mm -hmm. uh, our teachers, our examples, epitomize, right? Incredible reverence yeah. of God, love for God, mm -hmm. um, tawakkul upon God from an early age, a teenager. And, and we can even, you know, and we can even, it can even be argued rather. Allah Ta'ala Alam, we're just speculating, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But it can even be argued, or asked rather, who has the more difficult test? Mm -hmm. Is it the parent who's being asked, who's a prophet, to sacrifice his son? Or the son who looks to his father and says, I'm here, uh, O father sacrifice me who himself is a prophet right it's incredible yeah subhanallah it's uh we we do tend to forget about ismaya's sacrifice mm. because he was asked right it wasn't like you know i feel like when i was a child i kind of thought that ibrahim i don't know lured him up to a mountain <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean and uh you know ismail didn't know what was going to happen and all of a sudden here comes the knife um but no, that's not the case at all. Ibrahim was up front with him, straightforward. This is what I saw in a dream. This is what God is asking me to do. What, what? what do you think? Um, and so we have to reflect on the fact that Ismail did not shy away, right? He didn't cower. Um, he was courageous and I think, you know, a courageousness that we really can't even fathom. Um, because it's just, it's the height of, of sacrifice. And it is really interesting because there's, there's no greater sacrifice than those two, either to sacrifice your own life mm -hmm. or to sacrifice the life of your child. No, no, no more. You know, there's nothing that could be worse, yeah. right? And they're both about to happen in the same instance. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's just so powerful. To our younger viewers out there, Imagine being 13, 14, 15 years old and being asked to sacrifice your most prized possession for the sake of God, right? The thing you hold most dear. Yeah. Um, you're, rather, it could be your status, right, at school or amongst your peers or yeah. what, ha what, what have you. Mm -hmm. um, but, you. But to be asked to sacrifice your life at that age for the mm -hmm. sake of God, to me, it's just, it's just unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It really is... A story of remarkable courage, mm -hmm. remarkable patience, and I think what undergirds that entire enterprise is is, is 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 the remarkable love at its root. Yeah, no, that's something that definitely has to be brought out because 
on one, on one level, the story doesn't make sense without love no, as, no, no, no. you know, the, the groundwork for the whole thing. Mm. Um, and, uh, but it's tough because I think oftentimes when we use the word love, we don't quite mean the same thing that's happening with Ibrahim in that moment, sure, <laughs> you know sure. what I mean? Um, because it really is uh, a depth of, of emotion, right? It's not surface level in any way. And, uh, you know, I remember someone talking about, uh, you know, the love that you have for your child and that it's a kind of love where you often imagine the worst thing happening to them. And why, why would you do that? Why yeah. would you start to, you know, tear up randomly thinking about the worst thing that could happen to your child when they're sitting in front of you playing with a toy and there's absolutely nothing wrong? It happens to all of us. That yeah, 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 because there's there's a depth there that you know it's like this uh, this well mm -hmm. of love that is kind of it manifests in all these different ways, right? It doesn't just manifest in uh, the gushy ways. It manifests sure. in, in sometimes uh, deep pain if mm -hmm. it's associated mm. with that person that you mm. have profound love for, particularly a child. Um, and it's what some of the great masters, when they'd spoken, some, some of the great spiritual masters, uh, our, our righteous predecessors, scholars and the like, who've been asked, we understand the love of God, right? Uh, but we don't understand the fear of God. Mm -hmm. Explain to us what this fear is, is all about. And, there, and, and the famous response is, the fear is a result of dreading the loss mm -hmm. of the love of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because it's all linked and, and connected right. back to love. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, most people, and you were alluding to this, you know, when we think about love, it conjures up these gushy, you know, Valentine's Day sort of nonsense, yeah. sort of, but true, uh, pure, um, unconditional, deep love of a, of, of a cosmic nature is, is, is what this is all about. Yeah. And the vast majority of mankind, and we're not making any claims, it's not like we're, we're taking our... Yeah. guidance from from those who yeah, came before us modeling. but this is what they're modeling this is what they're leading us to what they're pointing us to i'm sorry you cannot have tawakkul you cannot have tawakkul upon something that you dread mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can't you can't trust that thing that that could hurt you that could you know you the, the, there's this sort of uh the type of tawakku that the prophets exemplify mm -hmm. and display can only be associated with a deep connection, yeah. a trust yeah. with a loving entity, a loving being. And I, and, and I think this is what uh, Ibrahim salam had in his heart. Mm -hmm. This is what Ismail salam had in his heart for his father, mm -hmm. who's the one who's going to run the knife across the back of his neck, mm -hmm. right? And for God. Mm -hmm. La ilaha illallah. Yeah, subhanallah. So subhanallah, you know, I think another important lesson to take from this is that Allah, God Almighty, intervened at the last moment mm -hmm. to save Ismail mm -hmm. from, from being sacrificed. And of course, he was never going to be sacrificed in, this, in the first place. This was a test. But the intention of his father, yeah. Ibrahim alayhi salam, and his intention, Ismail alayhi salam, we're enough mm -hmm. for God. Mm -hmm. We're enough for God. Yeah. And we in our tradition, it's, it's you know the famous hadith of the Arba'in, the first quoted by everyone mm -hmm. in the Juma Khutbahs, Inna la'malu bin niyat, right? Wa inna likulli mara'in manawa. So this idea that all actions are judged by their intentions, mm -hmm. and that the intention of the mu'min is far superior than the act of the mu'min. The mm -hmm. mu'min. Because mm -hmm. you can intend to do good and not be granted the means to do it, but yet you're granted for those, for that, you're, you're, yeah. you're awarded for that intention. So I hope that you all benefited from this short segment of us talking about Eid and Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam yes, and the meaning, the profound meaning in his story. Yeah, inshallah, I know just in preparing for this and discussing it, I've, 
I've been reinvigorated for my love for Ismail alayhi salam. Absolutely. Uh, and, and Ibrahim alayhi salam, I'm looking forward to Eid al-Adha a few days away, inshallah. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us and from you all. And may He, inshallah, honor us and our families this Eid and, and our Ummah and protect those who are being oppressed. And may He forgive us our sins, inshallah, and accept Amen. from us. And uh, Eid Mubarak, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.